Okay, here we are, the 2020 final examination official video for the Fluid Dynamics course. Um, this is a short video about the content of the exam, um, and I will release in the coming weeks another video to explain how best to prepare and how best to behave during the exam. Um, so let me uh, focus here only on the basic important information about the exam. The exam will take place in September 21, 2020, uh, from midday, 12, to 14 o'clock in a very large building, G26H1. The exam itself counts 50% towards your final grade, with the other half uh, being 40% for the homework and 10% for the quizzes. The Where is my slide? Here. Uh, the registration for the exam is mandatory, so you need to take a decision about three to four weeks before the exam whether you want to attend or not and register for the exam through the LSF system. I cannot do this for you. You have to decide individually whether you want to attend or not. The exam lasts two hours, two complete hours, 120 minutes, uh, and it is closed book. You cannot bring your own books and your own notes with you on the exam. The exam has six exercises. The first one uh, is mandatory and it counts 10%. And among the five remaining exams, you can choose three. Sorry, among the five remaining exercises, you can choose three. Uh, and each of those three will count 30% towards uh, the grade. <coughs> um, you can attempt as many as you want as many problems as you want, but that will only count uh, the three best answers among uh, the five here. Yeah? So let me perhaps represent or repeat this information here when it presented in a different way. There are six problems in total. You will have to solve problem number one, which is 10%. And then you choose among the five remaining here, you choose three. And you can attempt more if you want, but that will pick for you the best three exercises. The rules for the exam are like this. Um, you get a formula sheet and the content of the formula sheet will be released just uh, in just a few weeks. It is the content of the theory section before every problem sheet. So at the start of every problem sheet there is a box with a reminder about the main equations that you need to solve the problems. The content of this is repeated at the start of the exam. So the goal for me is that you do not have to memorize Use less um, bibliographic information, uh, but you have available the main equations you need uh, to solve through the problems. This includes uh, the Moody and the viscosity diagrams that we use through the semester. Uh, calculators are allowed. All kinds of calculators, uh, including programmable calculators. Um, you can type into your calculator the whole Navier-Stokes equations if you like, but your calculator must not be able to communicate with other devices. So, said uh, shortly, if you can take your calculator and you smear it against your face and you can talk to somebody else uh, through your calculator, then it's not a calculator, okay? So do check with me. Totally cool to have programmable calculators, not cool to have calculators that allow to communicate with other machines or with humans. Uh, no documents are allowed uh, except for language dictionaries. So you can bring with you a language dictionary, so word-to-word -word dictionary, not a technical book about fluid dynamics, but a language dictionary into your language so that you understand the words and the grammar better. Um, there's no communicating devices, no pencil cases, and no bags allowed in the room. You can leave your stuff on the sides of the room, at the front of the room. You may leave whenever you wish uh, during the exam, but not in the last 10 minutes because otherwise it gets a little too noisy and too messy. Uh, there's a list of examinable problems. This list is finite. It is complete. Uh, you will not see problems in the exam that are not in this list here. And this list is like so. I will repeat this list in the appendix of the notes very shortly, in just a few days. Um, and you see you have problems from chapters 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then also from problem from chapters 7, 8, and 10. Chapters 9 on turbulence and chapter 11 on large and small scale flows are not examinable this year. 
The first problem that is mandatory, that counts 10% in the exam, this problem is always chapter exercise 6.2. Yes, uh, it is the problem that asks you to write out the full um, expanded version of the Navier-Stokes equation or of the continuity equation and to explain what the conditions associated to those equations are. So just practice with those. Uh, this problem is not about remembering the capital of Kazakhstan or something like this. It is always the very same theoretical question. The other problems are lightly modified versions of problems you have worked on during the semester in the problem sheets. Typically, to modify a problem, I will take it, I will change the size of the parameters, of the length, the lengths are different, uh, the velocities are different, and I will typically change the direction of a few things. So I will turn the wheel the other way, I will uh, have the flow come from the bottom instead of coming from the top, but the problems are largely recognizable. In fact, I promise you will open the exam um, on September 21, and you will recognize things that you have seen before um, in the problem sheets. Exam papers are independent year to year. I do not try to have a, a homogeneous coverage of the chapters. I do repeat exercises from exam to exam, from year to year. Um, so I do not, do not try to guess the content of one exam based on the previous years. It doesn't work that way. Exam papers are independent year to year. The grading policy uh, is as follows. Um, on some questions, you need to be very clear and continuous. And this type of question is questions that go starting from equation so-and-so. Prove that equation so-and-so. Yes, that kind of questions. Uh, when you answer them, you have to be complete, continuous, and clear. For all the other answers, uh, the, the answer is where you're asked to calculate something. If you have a stroke of genius, and you suddenly know that the force is minus 12 newtons, uh, then you write this out, you will get full points and no questions asked, yes? So the correct result with the correct unit is enough to get full points. However, if you are wrong, then the more you have told me about how you calculate things and the more points I'm able to give you uh, for your wrong answer. Yes, I do, I do give as many points as I can, but you need to show me what your work uh, is, is before that. Um, important, illegible or ambiguous answers, answers I cannot completely comprehend, they are always discarded. Uh, there used to be a time as a young teacher when I would really, really try to decipher poorly written answers and would go to my colleagues and ask them to interpret what they, what they understood in students' papers. I do not do this anymore. If it's not 100% clear, whether it's a plus or a minus, uh, whether it's a nine or a three, uh, then I just discard the result. Yeah, so you need to write it out clearly because you are engineers. And a few remarks to conclude. Um, the passing grade is viable. Uh, I intend to have the passing grade at 50%, but sometimes uh, the performance is a bit low, and so I reduce this passing grade to 40%. However, in the last few years, it has been 50%, and I hope it will remain so. Uh, the success rate of the exam is not fixed at all. I'm not grading on a curve. Um, in the last few years, it has oscillated between 73% and 84%. I would love this to become 100%. I would not have any problem with that. Um, so I will try year after year to improve the grades of uh, the success rates of the students. My advice is to read and work through the previous papers. At least read them. Um, one previous paper, the previous the paper from last year, and its complete answer are in the appendix to the lecture notes. Um, and I will release all the other papers I have uh, with the complete answers on the course website in the coming weeks. So do go through those, at least to see how, at, just, at least to see what the pattern is and how I build uh, different exams. Um, and certainly to practice uh, solving the problems. Uh, I advise you to print out the lecture script for sure, and certainly the formula sheet, uh, so the beginning of the exam, uh, because it helps with preparation. Having it on paper and having worked with it many times will help you during the exam. But I will release another video about this soon. And finally, the concluding remarks are a little bit academic, but I really mean this. This exam is about 
work discipline. It's about proving you have done your homework and you have worked through the problem sheets. It is not about talent. It's not a point where I say, and now let's see whether you have really understood and let's apply this to a new kind of problem. This is not this. It's just showing um, that you know the method um, to solve all the problems that you have solved before, that you understand the method to do it and you can do it quickly. So in a way, it's not about being talented. It's not about being incredibly intelligent and fast during the exam. It's about just repeating what you have done before. Um, it's not about being lucky either, or so I hope. Yes, my intent building this exam is to give you a clear objective um, to work towards when you are working on the course, on the problem sheets during the semester. So with this, I, I wish you a very uh, fruitful revision, and I will see you in September 21 um, in the exam room. Bye-bye.